Hello viewers, SuperGT here. How are we all doing? Welcome to another Gran Turismo video. It's been a while. Here's me reading all of the rules for the new FIA season, which is now upon us. And first off is manufacturers. We have to choose our manufacturer. And because I had rather good fun with them last year or last season, I am going to go with BMW. I'm going to stick with BMW. And that means the M4 in group four and the m6 in group three a couple of really good cars now the team there totally disobeying uh, social distancing measures so that's going to be an early penalty for the bmw team which is an unfortunate way to start but uh, we arrive here at catalonia it's going to be a 17 lap race and this is qualifying so let's see how this goes. Of course, qualifying being rather important. Let's see how we can perform on our first lap back. It's been a while. In fact, when I looked at my uh, my stats in the main menu, the last time I'd played this was the 7th of April. And then this round is on the 21st of April. So, well, a two week gap. So let's see if I can return to some sort of vague form that I might have once had in our first qualifying lap i do like the group oh what's going on there so we've got some weird warping going on there i think that guy gave up his lap because he was fighting with the other chap you don't really want to fight on your qualifying lap fortunately i didn't get the the, uh, the toe from the car ahead but as i was saying i do like the group three races around the grand prix circuits that's probably where i feel most comfortable on this game and therefore we're looking to get a, a rather solid result to kick off the season into the final sector here and i was just catching up with this honda so i started outside of the slipstream range at the start of the lap but by the end here getting rather closer absolutely abusing the chicane at the end there and then through the final turn most certainly within the slipstream range let's see how we can kick off the season oh yes pole position well it's actually it's actually p3 but anyway roll the intro <laughs> Here we go. Don't you just hate it when you're on a flight, you're about to take off, and then Toto Wolf comes along and ends it all for you? Uh, you yeah, know, hate that. Hate that. Definitely let me know in the comments if that's happened to you. But here we go. Race number one. Now, I want to draw your attention to something very important here. Very, very important, which is the lack of air traffic control in the Gran Turismo universe. Who is in charge of this? This helicopter has almost got hit by a bunch of Spanish planes. This is not good enough. We've had so many close calls on this game. You've got hot air balloons, you've got helicopters and aeroplanes and kites flying around, almost hitting each other. It's like an episode of Air Force Proud. And that is not a good that is not a good thing because we're gonna have an accident very, very soon. Anyway into turn one back on the road let's forget the air for a second uh, so we started third and we are going okay here's my strategy all right hear me out listen to me here this is it's going to be a brave one given my history with fuel saving but i'm going to do a no stop we're going to try it and see if it can work you only have to use the hard tire so i'm on the hard tire already now i'm going to have to employ some rather rather sketchy and over the top fuel saving measures to make sure i actually get to the end here but there is a good reason why a no stop is actually a viable option maybe not in the bmw but we're going to try it anyway and that is the new pit lane uh, the pit lane update it basically made pit pit stops last about eight years so you can't do like your fancy four stops anymore um, so you can see there, I've already used 7% of fuel on my first lap. And if you do 100 divided by 17, it comes to roughly 5.77. I, I need to be using less than 6% per lap, basically. And, well, I'm well off schedule. The only thing counting my favour, I suppose, is that as the car gets lighter, it does become easier to save fuel. So you're going to use less fuel in the last laps than you are in the first laps so the first two, uh, the top two have already just driven off into the distance they are presumably not fuel saving and on the soft tires but they will have to do the eight year pit stop which isn't going to help their case 
Um, you can see here the train of Super GT hurtling down the main straight here at Catalonia. And the VW behind deciding he wants to be at the head of that train and going through. That's fine. I'm just doing my own race. I'm doing my own thing. And these cars are going to come through because I'm guessing they're going to go into the pit lane. So there's no, you know, there's no need to fight them. Let them do their thing. They can do their race. I'm going to do my own one. And we'll see how it all converges at the end. So at the end here of lap number three, already ten and a half seconds away from the lead. So they've actually got a very sizable margin at this point. And um, rounding out lap three with, what are we on here? 80% fuel. Uh, so yeah, still not on target at this point here. Going into lean mix six to save even more. By the uh, by the beginning of lap five, the Supra is beginning to, to hurtle past. And you can see the Alpha and the Beetle there, long gone. Another Supra coming through. And by lap number seven, I found myself in 10th place. But this is no problem. This is no problem. As we said, we're doing our own little thing here. So these guys, they're going to go and do the eight years in the pit lane. And um, one thing I did notice at this point is Michi uh, with 61% fuel and I've got 58. So I'm fuel saving like heck and I've still got less fuel than him and he is miles ahead. Uh, yes, he did have soft tyres. Well, I'm guessing, I mean, that Mazda RX Vision, I'm. there has been a bit of a, a whirlwind about that car recently. I'm guessing it is rather good on fuel. Uh, so with nine, yeah, I've got nine laps of fuel remaining with actually 10 laps of the race tr to go. So it, I am one lap behind schedule. Uh, so I just need to save one more lap of fuel. The pace is still all right. By this point here, overtaking cars who are going into the pit lane, I find myself back in third. So we're back in, you know, it's going to be one of those races where it will look good, then it will look bad, then it will look good again, and then it will look increasingly bad. Now here's particularly Michi coming back through. So he's taking his pit stop. He served the eight-year sentence in the pit lane. And he's coming back through. I mean, when, when someone does this, it does make you think, have I really done the right strategy here? This guy has started on the soft, done a one-stop, and he's already gone past me. And there's still six laps left. So it really does make you question your life decisions. And so you can see here, for the majority of lap 11, maybe 12 as well, I was really contemplating my existence within the world of Gran Turismo. Um, but we came through the final corner to end the 11th lap. And with six to go, I actually had 5.5 of fuel remaining. So we're getting slightly closer. Now, Doc Brown went past me on about, I think it was like lap six or something. And you can see here, I think he went a little bit too hard too soon. So he is also trying the no stop. And he's he's gone very slow all of a sudden. So I'm guessing his fuel situation is really rather dire. So he's going to have to drop right back now. Um, if anything, I don't think I saved enough early. But I think he, he, he hammered it a bit hard in let's say the first phase of the race and now he is most certainly paying the price so we're just going to go past him not hang about too much because I don't think he has any fuel left barely any fuel so we're going to go back up into second five points or let's say six seconds off the lead we can forget about that the the Mazda RX Vision is going to win this one but what, what position can we get can we get a podium I'm hoping Doc Brown here can hold up the guys behind it's going to be very difficult. I still have to just run my own race. And there's not a lot I can do. When the faster cars come up to me with Slipstream and the fact that they don't have to use Lean Mix 5000, they can probably just fly past me and there won't be a lot I can do. See this Ferrari just behind. Catching up very quickly. It's going to be very difficult. And it's just one of those things when, when you're running your own race I suppose there's not much point in fighting them because you're just inviting more and more people to get closer to you sometimes I mean look we've still got four laps left I'll be quite stupid to fight this guy just kind of just have to let him go through the final corner I'm guessing he's waiting for the main straight we're into lean mix three and I almost catch him by surprise how slow I'm going 
Let's probably get out and run quicker than this. So we're going to tuck into his slipstream, make the most of that. I mean, it's not going to help us for too long because he is just going to drive off into the distance. But looking at the radar or the, the map top right, we do have about three or four cars very close behind. One of which is Doc Brown, who's in dire, dire trouble. But we could still salvage a, a sixth place, possibly at least. So the Alpha goes flying past. By uh, midway through lap number 15, I decide to start going defensive. I still is probably too soon. Rip tonight, not really having any of it. It goes up the inside and absolutely destroys me. Good move. Not much I can do about it. And to be honest, there's not much I should do about it. So I find myself in my natural position of sixth place. And with two laps to go, the gap behind is four seconds. Four seconds to Lost Shelty, who is driving, was it the VW, I think, the Beetle. So can I keep up here? I have, I actually have, as we round up the final turn, 1.9 laps of fuel. There it is, 1.9 laps of fuel remaining. So we are pretty much getting on, on par with what we need. And as I, as I begin the final lap, we have one lap of fuel. So I'm okay for fuel, just. But Lost Shelty is going to go through. Not much I can do. It's one of these races where it's you have to be very committed to your strategy very early. And I guess this time I was. I, I did I did use a little bit too much at the start. But we're going to bring it home here. Let's, let's just uh, round it out through the final chicane for the last time. Lap 17. It's a half an hour race. A fairly lengthy race. And we're going to bring it home. BMW in 7th place. Started 3rd. Finished 7th. Okay. Not a bad result not too bad but i think we can definitely do better than that we can definitely go faster than that and we need to play to the strengths of the car and the bmw not really the best in terms of fuel so i think i need to be a bit more aggressive so we're going to start again we're going to go and enter uh the third split and we're going to try again this time with a different strategy we're going to push we're going to go for it be aggressive and do the one stop we'll take the eight year hit in the pit lane but um here's my qualifying lap from this one can we just uh give give a big shout out to mumu here for giving me the bump draft absolute og absolute legend if you're watching you're my new favorite person so thank you very much uh, so this is my qualifying lap for the second race Let's see if we can go any better so we did a 42 what did we do i don't remember the lap time now I think it was a 42.8 last time out. This time it's going to be 43.0. Pretty much a 43.1. So no Martin Tyler noises this time around. But it was good enough for fourth. So I'll take that. I'll take that to be fair. Still towards the sharp end. Okay, here we go then. We're going to have some, no uh, some near aircraft disasters once again. Presumably up in the skies. But back on the ground, the race begins. 17 laps. We're going to go aggressive. No, not really fuel save too much. Maybe short shift a, a little bit. Not really bother with the fuel mix. But you're going to go for it. Go aggressive. Starting on the hard tyre. And there's a good reason for that. We'll go onto the soft tyre at the end. Oh, let me explain it. Let me explain it for you. Well, I did a little bit of practice before the race. And it looked like the soft tyre really degrades very quickly on about the fifth or sixth lap. So... You want to ideally use the soft tyre at the end when the car is lighter so that the tyre wear isn't as bad. The hard tyre doesn't matter. It, it can take the tyre wear at the start of the race when the car's heavy. It's fine. At the end, you want you want the softs from the lighter car. So let's see how this works out. I think I've got the right strategy here for this one. Hard onto the soft with a little bit of fuel saving, but not really too much. Don't have to worry about that. So, you see the top two, I'm presuming they are on the soft tyre, because they've just driven off already there. Uh, the leader's already three seconds ahead. I, I think the difference between the soft and the hard was like, I think it was like four seconds. It was quite a big difference, four seconds per lap that is. Um, so that is, you know, a major difference, at least for the first couple of laps before the softs begin to wear out. So, okay, well, what I wanted to know is the manufacturers that you guys have gone for i've gone for bmw because i felt like i had a solid season with them last year 
and I enjoy using their cars. I mean, I have one, and I don't know, I suppose I now have an affinity with them. And I used to have an a bath, a bath aren't in the game, therefore I can't use them. Um, I think I think I can have a good season here with BMW, getting used to them last in, in one of the recent FIA seasons. Now, okay, lap two. Uh, so we've got a couple of soft tyre runners coming through here. So this guy in the, in the Viper here, um, clearly quicker. He caught up with me very fast. There's no point fighting him. He's on a different strategy. Uh, so let him go ahead. Just try and tuck in. Maybe uh, make the most of your slipstream for a bit. He's uh, most certainly on the soft tyre. You can just tell by how much quicker he can go through the corners. He can break later. It just has so much more grip and traction on the exit. There's not much I can do about it. Might as well just let him go. And that's the thing with these long FIA races where strategy and tyre wear and fuel really comes into it. A lot of the time you're just running your own race the best you possibly can. And then you're not, you're not really trying to fight until like the last couple of laps. Um, so you see the, the, uh, the Viper just driving away. This is lap number seven now. So I managed to catch up with Colin in the Subaru. He's in WRX just up in front. Uh, the Viper, just have a look here as we zoom in. He just gets a little bit wide on the kerb. So by the seventh lap of the stint, the soft tyre gets really difficult to drive. The hard tyre here actually stays fairly level. You can see my lap times on the right, fairly constant, like mid 46s, sometimes into the low 46s. Um, but you can just drive this this tyre quite consistently. But the soft tyre, it's really good for like three or four laps, and then it just really begins to just degrade massively. And then you could pretend to be Lewis Hamilton and say, Bono, my tyres have gone. At which point you will have to box. So let's have a look if some people pit here. I'm guessing the soft tyre you want to do about seven and then hard about ten. So yes, the leader goes in, second place goes in, third place goes in. So they have all done their soft tyre stints with, and they've all got about 50% fuel. I've got 44 so I've got a little bit less. I haven't been fuel saving perhaps as much as I could be. But I'm also just trying to stay into the toe here of Colin in front. Which is going to also help me in my quest to save fuel. And therefore the planet. Okay so lap number 8. We're just going to continue here. This is... Let me, let me tell you right now that this one... This race is going to be very very good towards the end because it's just one of those races and it happens a lot in Gran Turismo where when they get all the numbers right in terms of tyre wear and fuel it just it all sort of culminates in the end and this is very much one of those races Colin here getting a penalty so I'm considering here just trying to go for a move so that by the time he serves the penalty I'll be even further ahead so we're going to go into the slipstream here we're going to look for this move into turn one we do have good top end on the BMW and I'm on the brakes I don't want to overshoot it and that's about as close as I could get. Could quite get that move done. But he will serve that penalty at some point during lap number nine. I think it's after turn nine. And we will hopefully get ahead. As long as I can just keep vaguely with him. So here it is, turn number nine, top of the hill. A fast sweeping right hander as we go over the crest. Make sure you don't go wide. He's going to serve his penalty, go to the left. We are going to get past. Then I, I just misjudged his breaking point by maybe like 10 metres. Go a little bit too wide. And once you're wide on the marbles, you have no grip. He's on our left. And he goes immediately back through. That's a bit of a frustrating moment there. And I've been driving rather well, if I may say so myself, until that point. And just making that mistake a little bit wide and just retakes the position. That's okay though. That's okay. We can just continue. Still in a good position. Still in second. Still towards the front. It's a very close race and it will get very close towards the end when you know we've had our pit stop and we'll have to go onto the soft tire and that's when you can really push and that's when this game becomes really fun when when you're on the fastest tire you've got a decent amount of fuel and you can just really attack the race so sitting in lean mix six here i thought i'd just sit behind to save a bit of fuel because i was a little bit uh, less fuel i had a little bit less fuel compared to the others when they pitted so i do need to consider that so here we go then. End of, lap, end of lap number 10. We are going to peel to the right-hand side here. Into the pit lane. Make sure we don't hit the wall on the right. Very easy to do that. And this is where it takes... Yeah, well there it is. Roughly eight years for the car to actually get to the pit box. It, it really does take forever. 
Uh, so this 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 season's FIA races are really going to be a lot of no stops and one or one stops. It really does depend on the track, but the pit stops are a lot longer than they used to be. So it's not going to be any of the three or four stop races in any longer. So out of the pit lane, let's take a look at this situation. I'm in sixth place with seven laps to go, including this one that I'm on. And there is the map of the race. So you see the guys in the lead, a decent margin ahead, but we do have a massive advantage in terms of the tyres now, and we can push on the fuel. And uh, at the moment, the gap, 12.1 seconds to the lead. You might think, well, how are you going to make that up in only six laps or seven laps? Well, honestly, on these tyres, on soft tyres, fresh soft tyres, you can make up like three or four seconds in one lap. So this can get very close towards the end and it will uh, lap number 12 catching up with our first uh, hard tire runner and he was on the soft earlier he came flying past us in the first part of the race now it's our turn to go flying past him he's going to go to the right hand side in fact he indicates to say please just overtake me on the left i'm not going to fight you at all wise decision there's no point fighting so we go through up into fifth unfortunately Colin did get away he managed to have a slightly faster pit lane uh, pit stop and maybe only seven years and he just he just got away by about two seconds just that crucial little difference and just looking at that it's always nice to know that you can actually see the people you're trying to catch up with we are eight seconds of the lead now so you can see already we've gained quite a lot of time so we we can constantly watch that red number on the left hand side of the screen the 8.3 now but also we have a visual reference which is always good we can see the guys we're trying to catch and that's always good as you can compare it every lap you see okay you get around to the, uh, the same part of the track and you see if you visually got close and that's always it's always good to know in your mind that you are catching because the numbers well they don't lie but uh, it's always nice to see it physically for yourself okay let's run this from here to the end because this is where things get really exciting lap 15 halfway through lap 15 we've got two and a half laps left to go i'm 2.5 seconds away from the lead in fact the top three you can see them on the screen right in front of me so this race is getting very very close towards the end here and i could honestly finish fourth i could finish first it is that close so we're going to first catch up with uh, victor here also a bmw user let's not forget the uh, the, the victor and kryptonite in the lead in the aston martin they are both on the hard tire currently myself and uh, colin in the subaru are on the soft tires so we do technically have a tire advantage at least before the tires really do begin to go off so we're side by side it's a bmw drag race down the main straight kryptonite defending and that is exactly that is exactly what i want to happen he's defending against colin i am 1.7 seconds behind colin and he's the one who i he, he's the main threat for this race he's in second and he's got the soft tires so if he gets past kryptonite right now then there's a very big danger that i won't be able to catch him so i need kryptonite here to really block his fellow belgian and uh, allow me to catch up so at the start of the lap yeah about 1.7 already down to 1.1 we are gaining massively every corner that kryptonite can defend is a corner that I am going to gain on. I'm going to gain a couple of attempts every time. And before you know it, I am going to be right on the back of Kryptonite, uh, or Colin, both of them, and hopefully within a chance of trying to win the race. So now, through turn nine, over the crest, through the penalty zone, without penalty, we haven't got any penalties this race, so it's a, it's a solid drive. Kryptonite goes defensive, Colin around the outside. Is he going to be able to pull that off? Got the superior grip on the soft tyre, and he is alongside here and up into turn number 12 he gets it done he's on the right hand side he's gonna have the inside hit so he goes through that is not what i wanted to see i was hoping Krypton i could hold him off maybe at least onto the main straight but the aston martin has really good top end so we're going to see if he can go for the reply down into towards turn one so here it is then everyone through the final corner of the penultimate lap to begin the final lap 17 of 17 one lap to go and we have a very good chance of winning this race from third here at the beginning colin goes defensive to the right hand side kryptonite is going to try and go around the long way it's not 
quite going to work for him. He wasn't quite close enough. Uh, Colin getting a really good exit out of the final turn. And just getting enough of a gap so that he didn't have to fully uh, defend into turn one. Well, he did defend, but he didn't have to, you know, really force his elbows out. And look for the move here. I do have to get past as quickly as possible. But at the same time, I have to do it in such a way that Colin doesn't get away too much. So it's a really tricky situation to be in. Uh, Crips not on the inside here. I'm going to try go for the cutback. It just doesn't work. Parked it on the apex. Nothing I can do about that. Colin just beginning to drive away here in the lead. And he's got a good sort of half a second there at least now. So I'm running out of corners within which to try to overtake this Aston Martin. It is a big chunky car just like the BMW I'm driving. Barely enough room for the pair of us. So out of turn nine into the hairpin. This is probably my best overtaking opportunity. We are going to go for it. We're going to go aggressive late on the brakes. That's the tyre advantage right there. Park it on the apex. Beautifully done. And we are up to second side by side through 11 into 12. And I should hopefully just get ahead here on the exit. Yes, I do. Up into second with barely a sector left to go. Is it too late? Yes, I, I'm guessing it is. Unless Colin runs out of fuel, which is a possibility. You never quite know. But through the final corner. It was a fine race. Started fourth. We're going to come through to finish in second. What a brilliant ending that was. It's a shame that it wasn't a win. But... Um, it was just a really good race. A really good fun race. 1.3 seconds off of the lead in the end. And that is going to give us near enough 300 points. I think I could have won that if I'd just done a couple of little things differently. But still, um, you know, for a first FIA race where I haven't played the game a huge amount in the last month, I'll take a near 300 point finish. But that is all from me. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. Do drop a like if you enjoyed it and uh, give us a sub if you're new. But um, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.